Hello everyone and welcome back to Typing Tuesday. Today we will take a closer look at chatbots. What is a chatbot? Okay, let me try and explain. Imagine you're texting with a friend, but instead of your friend you're actually talking to a computer program designed to chat with you. That's a chatbot. It's like having a conversation with a computer. Chatbots are programmed to understand what you're saying and respond in a way that makes sense. They can help answer questions, give information, or even just chat with you like a friend. Some chatbots are really smart and can learn from talking to lots of people, while others are more basic and follow preset rules. You might have talked to a chatbot without even realizing it. They're used in all sorts of places like customer service websites, helping you find information online, or even in games and apps. They're pretty cool, but remember, they're not real people just clever programs designed to chat with you. Stay tuned for a short video on Chatbot, followed by Anime Club and This Week in History. See you all next week and have a nice day. Have you ever wondered who you're really talking to when you chat online? It turns out you might be talking to an AI chatbot. But what exactly is an AI chatbot? AI stands for artificial intelligence. And an AI chatbot is a computer program that uses AI technology to understand and respond to what you say in real time. You might have seen chatbots in games or on various websites too. They're able to do complex things such as being a tutor or giving you personal advice if you're having a bad day. But here's the challenge. These chatbots are becoming so clever that it's hard to tell if we're talking to a human or a robot. The reason this is getting so hard is that AI chatbots are intentionally designed by companies to sound just like us. But why? App designers know that for AI chatbots to work, and for people to actually use them, they need to make the chatbots communicate in a way that feels real and believable. The more human-like they sound, the more engaging the experience is. Plus, human-like speech helps make the chatbot sound more trustworthy. Okay. So how do they go about making chatbots sound so human-like? It starts with the app designers giving the chatbot a unique personality. This means it can be curious, serious, funny, or anything in between. AI chatbots can also appear to express a range of emotions when they chat. To do this, the chatbot is taught to understand human emotions, like excitement or sadness, so that it can respond with the right words, even though it can't actually feel those emotions. Some AI chatbots have memory, too. They remember conversations you've had with them and use that knowledge to respond in a way that feels like you're chatting with a friend. So if the purpose of AI chatbots is to help us, what's the problem if they sound like real people? Well, first off, you can't assume that everything an AI chatbot says is true. Even if they sound reliable, they don't always get the facts right. A chatbot's database can have false information or it might misunderstand your request. Second, chatbots don't have empathy, meaning they can't actually understand what you're feeling. They can't give you a real hug or share real experiences either. Any response that seems to show empathy is just a computer-generated reply based on patterns the chatbot has learned. So why does all of this matter? Because even though we're talking to a computer, we can get tricked into thinking and feeling that we're talking to an actual person. And that very belief can impact our expectations for relationships with real people, from how quickly we expect them to respond to the way they react to what we say. AI chatbots are amazing tools that have the potential to teach us new things and help make our lives easier. And even though they're designed to feel like digital friends, it's important to remember that they're not human. Yes, they can be helpful, but they have their limits. So next time you talk to an AI chatbot, remember, it's just a clever machine designed to assist you. This week in Anime Club, we present an episode of Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? Despite it's kind of a very risque title, 
It actually primarily focuses on the main character, Belle, who's the blonde character here over on the right there, as he fights these creatures and monsters in a dungeon that even Newt's commander wouldn't want to go near. So despite this title, the epi this particular episode tells of lost love and romantic regrets. Kind of a real tearjerker there at the end, too. Also on Wednesday, the Wellness Center, sponsored by Miss Hanel, is going to be sponsoring a craft club. Looks like Gromit there, he's getting into it, knitting himself a nice warm scarf, so come by and see what she's got on tap for your artistic endeavors. Also on Wednesday, the STEM Club, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics, is going to be held in Miss Brodeur's room, also 245 to 345, and see what kind of interesting things that she's going to teach you guys about science. Pretty cool experiments in there. Next, the Yearbook Club, Miss Yamanishi's room in 202 to 245, 245 to 345. See what they've got going on and get a preview of what's going to be in this year's yearbook. So thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all again next week. Welcome once again to This Week in History. I am your host as usual, Mr. Simon. February 4, 1861, the Apache chief Cochise was arrested in Arizona by the United States Army for raiding a ranch. Cochise then escaped and declared war, beginning a period known as the Apache Wars, which lasted some 25 years. February 6, 1952, King George VI of England died. Upon his death, his daughter, Princess Elizabeth, became Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Her actual coronation took place on June 2nd, 1953, and she basically ruled England for nearly 70 years. February 8, 1910, the Boy Scouts of America was founded by William Boyce in Washington, D.C., modeled after the British Boy Scouts. Of course, the Boy Scouts are known for their public service and also their many outdoor activities. February 9, 1943, during World War II in the Pacific, the U.S. troops uh, captured Guadalcanal uh, in the Solomon Islands after six months of heavy fighting with 9,000 Japanese and 2,000 Americans killed. For some of those losses were the uh, Sullivan brothers. Uh, the USS Hornet was also sunk, and also the American aircraft carrier USS Wasp were also casualties of that conflict. February 10, 1942, the first Medal of Honor during World War II was awarded to Second Lieutenant Alexander Neninger, posthumously, which means he was awarded it after his passing, for his heroism during the Battle of Bataan in the Philippines. Notable birthdays. 4th of February, Charles Lindbergh. He was born in Detroit, Michigan. He made the first non-stop solo flight from New York to Paris, May 20th to May 21st in 1927. Next up on the 6th of February, we have Aaron Burr. He was born in New York, New Jersey. In 1804, Vice President Burr challenged Alexander Hamilton to a duel over Hamilton's negative remarks and mortally wounded him. So it's a very famous duel that cost Alexander Hamilton his life. The 6th of February, legendary baseball player George Herman, better known to the world as Babe Ruth, was born in Baltimore, Maryland. Ruth held or shared 60 major league records, including pitching 29 scoreless innings and hitting 714 home runs. Quite the athlete, both in the field and in the batter's box. Also on the 6th of February, Ronald Reagan, the 40th U.S. President, was born in Tampico, Illinois. Reagan spent 30 years as an entertainer in radio, film, and television before becoming the governor of California in 1966. Elected to the White House in 1980, he survived an assassination attempt and became the most popular president since Franklin Roosevelt. Next, on the 7th of February, we have Sir Thomas More. He was born in London, England. He was a lawyer, a scholar, and held the title of Lord Chancellor of England. As a devout Catholic, he refused to acknowledge the divorce of King Henry VIII from Queen Catherine 
thereby refusing to acknowledge the king's religious supremacy. Of course, that didn't well sit well with the king, so he was charged with treason, found guilty, and beheaded in 1535. 400 years later, in 1935, he was made a saint by Pope Pius XI. Next, also on the 7th of February, have the British novelist Charles Dickens. He was born in Portsmouth, England. He examined social inequalities through his works David Copperfield, Oliver Twist, and Nichols Nickleby. In 1843, he wrote probably one of his most famous works, A Christmas Carol in Just a Few Weeks, an enormous popular work even today. It's been made into many films and cartoons as well. Next, on the 8th of February, you have the Union Civil War General William Tecumseh Sherman. He was born in Lancaster, Ohio. During the American Civil War, he achieved recognition for his command of military strategy as well as criticism for the harshness of his scorched earth policy that he implemented against the Confederate States, prompting him to famously comment that war is hell. When uh, Ulysses S. Grant became President of the United States in March of 1869, Sherman succeeded him as the commanding general of the Army. And then lastly, we have William Henry Harrison, uh, also on the 8th, uh, it should say February. He was the ninth U.S. President, he was born in Berkeley, Virginia. He took office in March of 4th, of 1841, and he died only 32 days later after developing pneumonia from the cold weather during his inaugural ceremonies because he did a speech when it was kind of a snow, sleet, kind of a rain condition, without a coat and wet, without a hat because he felt it was undignified. Well, just like Washington, ah, do something about the weather. Don't get these guys. Anyways, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you all again next week. Thank you very much for viewing This Week in History, and I've been your host, Mr. Simonson.